What's up everyone and welcome to another Hate Watchers episode review. Today we're going to be breaking down and reviewing the third episode of House of the Dragon entitled Second of His Name. Just before we get into that though, please remember to like the video if you like it, comment on our stupid jokes, and subscribe as it helps the channel grow. With that out of the way, let's jump right into the action. Spoilers ahead for episode 3, Second of His Name. Opening on a fiery scene of a recent conquest by the Crab Feeder's forces, Damon swoops in on the back of Caraxes, the Bloodworm, torching the battlefield and sending his enemies running for cover in the nearby caves. I guess they didn't want to stick around for the Red Lobster Crab Roast. Damon then makes sure to repay one of his captured soldiers for their the birthday of Prince Aegon, King Viserys and Queen Alicent's firstborn son, and we find out that we've jumped ahead another three years. Thailand Lannister urges the king to get involved in the war in the Stepstones. Seemingly deposed of her claim to the throne, Rhaenyra has turned into your typical, hippie, drug-using college student. On a serious note, being driven from her assumed succession has her showing signs similar to her previously besmirched uncle, Damon. At the Special Olympics, we see this cripple and this dog with development issues. Trumpwin Lannister then snaps his fingers, telling Rhaenyra to go make him a sandwich. Trumpwin goes on to tell Rhaenyra, Castle Rock has the biggest tower, okay? The biggest, most beautiful tower in the Seven Kingdoms. It's huge. And I'll build you a dragon pit, and the crab feeders are gonna pay for it. After tasting the roofies, Rhaenyra gives the wine back to him. Otto keeps his pimp hand strong and tells the king to quiet down, showing him he wears the big boy pants now, after successfully pimping out his daughter. Princess Rhaenyra plays hard to get with Sir Criston Cole. Cole asks Rhaenyra if he wants him to kill the lord who's trying to court her, and she laughs. Sure, it's a joke now, but in 200 years when Cersei Lannister is on the throne, this would be business as usual. Otto makes a very Targaryen proposal by suggesting Rhaenyra be married off to her two-year-old half-brother, Prince Aegon. I'm not going to make one, but there's an egg on her face joke to be made here. The king just keeps pounding wine at a pace even Tyrion Lannister would be proud of. While Rhaenyra and Cole are relaxing in the woods, Harvey Weinstein bursts into their camp and quickly gets on top of Rhaenyra, drooling on her in between heavy breaths. Back at the hunting camp, Queen Alicent has a talk with Viserys about his drinking. Elsewhere, Rhaenyra can be heard moaning in the forest. Hung over, the king needs a little step stool just to get off of his horse. Hoping to find a fabled white stag of legend, King Viserys gets a brown one instead, so he kills it. The weak king needs help from everyone as he has to stab it twice. Princess Rhaenyra rides back into camp with Harvey in tow. Back with the king and queen, Alicent is going over some teen mom drama. Holy crap, I don't even need to say anything here. Do you see these paintings in the background? <laughs> what the fuck is going on in these? We notice that the king has lost another finger to the spreading rot. Rhaenyra name drops a place named Dwarfstone, which must be where Tyrion came from. The king speaks lovingly of his deceased wife. She made a man of me. With her mouth and two other places. King Viserys assures Princess Rhaenyra that her claim to the throne remains intact. We move out to the Stepstones where the war isn't going as planned. The Crab Feeders' force's ability to simply retreat into their caves is proving troublesome. In the background, we see Damon making top gun bombing runs on the Crab Feeders' position. On a cliff face overseeing the action, the commanders are playing with their leftover crab pieces from their recent lunch at Red Lobster. We briefly spot an Asian character in the background, giving House of the Dragon an edge and diversity over the Rings of Power, and we didn't even count Thailand Lannister. For whatever reason, all the men under their command are allowed to stand four feet away and listen to Corlys and his brother Vaymond talk about how their assaults are failing. Daemon receives a message that his brother, King Viserys, is sending reinforcements to end the war in the Stepstones. Wanting all of the glory himself, and because he never heard the common phrase urging you not to, Daemon then tries to kill the messenger. Damon row, row, rows his little boat gently across the way to the battlefield, which looks like something you'd see in Afghanistan. Damon is here to surrender and- Oh no! It's a fake out! Damon takes off across the battlefield, running even faster than Tom Cruise. The crab feeders' forces send volleys of arrows down on him as he cuts through everyone in his path. If we had Damon on our side, we wouldn't have had to abandon Afghanistan. With Damon cornered and wounded, it looks like his gambit has failed. 
That is until Lenor Valerion starts dragging these nuts across the crab feeder's face on the back of a grayish white dragon named Sea Smoke. Corliss's ground forces join the fight, and we got ourselves a good old fashioned melee. Damon wanders off to find the crab feeder. Let's hope he brought his bib. Lenore flies around like Top Gun Maverick, torching everyone he can find. Damon emerges from a nearby cave with half of the crab feeder. Hopefully, one day they can defeat the other half of him. Damon clearly didn't bring his bib, as we see him drenched in blood, and the episode comes to a close. Time to give our thoughts on the episode. Now, some scenes definitely dragged on longer than necessary early on. It felt like we spent 20 minutes watching the king get drunk. But luckily our patience paid off with some great action scenes at the end. The classic Game of Thrones brutality we all know and love is back. Going into this show with the knowledge that we'd be seeing some serious time jumps eventually had us worried that the show would move forward too fast. Thankfully it's not doing so yet and it's giving us time to see the characters grow and change. Hopefully some of the scenes dragging on now will only help to flesh out the relations and conflicts we'll see after the bigger time jumps take place. Plus, it's easy to forgive the long, boring scenes when we are rewarded with skulls being bashed in and people getting torched by a dragon on the beach. Well, we've reached the end of the video where we have to decide if this episode was a hate watch or a great watch. This episode is putting House of the Dragon firmly back into the great watch category. We got some much-needed battle sequences, defeated a villain, and still managed to get some character development out of it. Thanks for making it this far into the video. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Just a heads up that I'll be out of town for two weeks, so the next two episode reviews will be delayed until I get back. Subscribe to the channel to be notified once we're back on schedule, and thanks for watching.